Before I go into the word of God, I would like to give five minutes for Brother Manuel to share his testimony. How God has been faithful in his life and how do we see the faithfulness of our father and then we'll move further to the word of God. Good morning everyone. Good morning to also all who are watching online. We all believe we are children of God and God loves us, all of us so much. We also believe that we are blessed and we become a blessing to others. And these blessings turn into prayers and prayers turn into miracles. Today is one of my testimonies of my life. I have been having many testimonies since I was a young boy. But this testimony is one which I would like to share with all of you. Pandemic came 2019. Things were not working so well for everyone. But still, we were moving on. But suddenly came a storm in my life. 2021, my wife diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. Breast cancer, cancer in the lungs. But all glory to God, after her 13th chemo and her latest results were showing some insignificant improvement in her cancer. Amen to God. And then after that, again in 2021, I had some swelling in my feet because I'm diabetic and I did a mistake I did not know. I took the hot, hot compress and I started to comp my feet and it burned, became a wound. And then I had to go to the doctor and the doctor said that if this wound does not heal, there is chances we may cut your feet. I said, no, I will not let you do that because I believe and I have faith in God so much. And that faith you can see, I'm still standing today on both my feet. And my wound got healed. Today after a year, it's much better. Then came another storm. I was having some pain in my chest and then I went to one of the hospitals during this pandemic in 2021. And the, the hospitals not willing to confine me. And then they said, we will do your test. And then I tested positive, <laughs> COVID positive. <laughs> and then I had to, with the same pain in my chest, I had to Quarantine myself at home for 14 days with that pain. I did not know what the pain is. And then after 14 days, I again went back and then I was again COVID negative. And then after that, one night my pain became so acute, so acute, I did not know what to do. And finally I told my wife that I think this time I really need to go to the hospital. But no hospitals were accepting me because it was full of COVID patients. And suddenly God sent me an angel and the angel called the hospital and the hospital sent me an ambulance and I was immediately confined. When I was confined in hospital, they said that I have a massive heart attack and they started treating me in the hospital in Ceylong. And after three or four days, my pain ceased I was feeling better. But then the doctor said that you will have to go to another bigger hospital because the facilities in this hospital is not available. So you will have to go to a bigger hospital where there is chances that you will have to go through a bypass surgery. I knew what is a bypass surgery because some of my friends also have gone through that. I said, okay, whatever happens is God's will. And then the, just the day before I was going to be transferred to another bigger hospital which had all the facilities for MRI, 2D echoes and the high digital ultrasound and everything, I tested again COVID positive. And then because I was COVID positive, the hospital there was not willing to accept me because they don't accept patients who were COVID positive. So again, I had to go back. I quarantined myself in my office for another 14 days. So I had to wait for another 14 days. But my heart, the chest in my, in my, the pain in my chest had reduced. So I was able to hold it. And then after 14 days, again, I tested COVID negative. And I was happy that this time I'm going to go to the hospital for my right treatment. 
and then I was transferred to Manila Medical in Manila. And it's good that I got a chance, I got confined, and then the doctor started to make so many tests on me, CT scans, MRIs, and so many, and one by one, I, I think I had almost 14 doctors attending to me in the hospital. There were 14 doctors starting from two cardios, one heart surgeon, uh, COVID infectious, uh, disease doctor, a kidney doctor, liver doctor, so many doctors, I, I did not know what is happening. But I kept my faith strong. And then finally, even the doctors were confused that what they were not able to detect. Three of my arteries were fully blocked. And they said that you really will need to go through a bypass surgery. But then we will decide that only upon the final MRI. And then my MRI was done. And I remember during my MRI, I, there were four or five doctors in the room watching on the monitor and then after that they came back to me and they said that please prepare the funds, you may need to go for a bypass surgery. I said it's okay, that, that is not the problem. So, but then I, before my surgery, the doctors again decided to have a COVID test on me. And just two days before my surgery, I again tested COVID positive. And then the doctor said that we cannot go ahead with your angiogram. So I didn't know what to do. And then two days I was in isolation there in the hospital. And after two days again came the, the person who checks for COVID. And then I sat down with that lady and I said, let's pray together. I am having this COVID positive, negative, positive, negative from such a long time. So we both sat down, she, I prayed, and then the next day my reports came, I'm negative. And the doctor started to prepare for my angiogram. There was some other doctors who were not willing for me to go into angiogram because I had so many complications in me with my liver, with my kidney, with my diabetes, my sugar going high, so many. So there were lots, there were few doctors who were not willing to sign the papers for me to go through my angiogram because I may have a chance during the angiogram of having another heart attack or I may go into coma. So they asked me that they need to talk to my wife. So they called my wife and they asked my wife about how they should go about this. And then she said that, let him decide, because I know he keeps his faith very strong. Let him decide. So I told the doctors, doctors, you all are my angels, but my big doctor is up there and he will take care of me. And I know that he will surely take care of me. And then they asked me to sign some papers. I got ready for it. And then my heart surgeon said that I will need to have a, sp a specialist ventilator doctor in case if I go into, ventil into ventilation or I'm, anything that happens during the angiogram. So I said, it's okay, that's, that's okay with me. And then there was one more doctor added during my angiogram. But my friends, I tell you all, he kept my faith so strong. So many nights, sleepless nights I was having. From the day one of my heart pain until my last day before my angiogram, I was not sleeping in peace. The whole night I was not able to sleep at all. But that night I could feel that God was sending me power of the Holy Spirit. I could feel it. In my, in my room I could feel there is some power moving around me, so Manuel, don't worry about tomorrow. And then the next day, early morning, the nurses came, they started to inject me, to put me to sleep. And 
After that, I did not know what was happening because I was in semi-unconsciousness. I was not totally unconscious. I could see, I could hear some few things when they are talking to me, I could hear them. Sir Manuel, this is your ventilator doctor, this is your doctor who will perform the angiogram. Can you see them? Can you hear them? I say, yeah, yeah, I can. I can, I can hear a little. At the same time, when I was going into the surgery room, there was another Egyptian there who was also going into the surgery room at the same time with me. And then the person who was my caretaker had a little discussion with them because they saw my, they saw my face with a little beard. They thought that maybe I am also from an Arab, Arab place. So they, he said, no, he is from India. And that Egyptian also was having the same problem. I couldn't talk to him because we both were in the same un semi-unconscious stage. And then I was like, almost like feeling so sleepy. I did not know what was happening. And then I was back to my room. When I was back to my room, I looked at myself, oh, I do not have any bypass or nothing. Maybe I have to go for my bypass. But no, it was not like that. The doctors came to my room and they said that you have gone through a miracle. During your angiogram, which we never expected until your reports of your MRI, your three large arteries, which were fully blocked due to certain reasons, it has burst open during your angiogram. Your all three large arteries have burst open and you don't need to go through any stents or any bypass surgery. It has happened with it's a miracle. It was a miracle. And then, after a few days, the doctor told me that it's time for you now to go back home. And I was... I was so happy that God has opened another door for me. God has opened another door for me. So, this is my testimony which I wanted to share with all of you. Thank you so much. Let's give glory to God and let's pray that God will continue to show His miracles in and through His life. Father, we give you all the glory for Brother Emmanuel to stand strong in faith, knowing that you are the Father. You are the doctor of all the doctors, and that's what your word says. Those who trust in you, their faces will not be ashamed. Your word never goes void, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of Brother Manuel as he is restoring. We pray for the complete restoration of his body. And also we thank you, Lord, for the recovery that is happening with the uh, Sister Ellen, we pray that both of them would be completely healthy and be blessed. We thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. What a mighty God we serve.